Okay, welcome everybody. Um, uh, to those who've joined us, see we've got uh, a handful of people in the room so far. Uh, welcome Emmanuel, Cassandra, Linda, Zinkle, and um, and we'll see who else arrives as the case may be. Uh, as normal, before I start, are there any questions straight off the top? Anybody got anything that's nagging them? Um, that's uh, they want any clarity on. Um, <clears throat> once again, you can unmute. Uh, yes, Zinchle. Hi, hi, Tim. Um, hi. My question is around project two, assignment yes. two. Um, yes. We're busy trying to page other uh, in our WhatsApp group, but I yes. ended up with a person who did a different project. So, um, I just want to confirm if um, we can take one of the projects and, and, yes. and continue with them. Yeah, that's that's the um, that's fine, and that's the intention. So the the, uh, the understanding is that <clears throat> all along it would be quite difficult to, uh, and and it was never an instruction that you must join up with people who've, who've chosen the same project as you. What you need to do is as a group. Once you have got together as a group, if you've done different differing projects, um, in fact, if there's three of you in a group, you might um, <coughs> each have chosen a different project. Then together, you must choose which one you're going to move forward with, and and then just just work on that that's that project on its own. You basically forget about the work you've done already. So that all right, should... thanks, thanks, Jim. Cool. Um, <clears throat> Any other questions from anyone else? Hi, Tim. It's Darren again. I see um, assignment two is taken off of the, the platform again. I don't know if they're going to reload it. The submission links are gone. Yeah, I was on today again. And I see it's not there anymore. Oh, oh sorry. The, the, you're talking about the submission link. That's correct. It was there and it's disappeared. <laughs> yeah, I, I, actually, I actually hid it. Um, I discovered... Um, this semester that some of the other online tutors um, have done a clever thing of when it comes time to submit part one they or um, they they hide part two to avoid confusion because some students um, particularly if you're not familiar with and you're un, uh, um, you know kind of not sure how to navigate your way or exactly you might submit under assignment one and then think oh no i want to um update my submission and and then you click on sub, um, submission two and so on so uh, what they suggested and i and i followed their advice was let's um hide the submission two link and uh um and then it just makes it um a little bit simpler so what i will do is um make sure that that link is opened i, th I think the limit is like um Two weeks before due date, it can be open from. Uh, but I will, I will make sure that's opened at some point. Thanks for highlighting that. Um, Emmanuel, you wanted to ask. Um, <clears throat> Emmanuel, I'm not hearing you. I don't know if you need to unmute or if your mic's battling. You can always type the question. Yeah, I'm not hearing you, unfortunately. <clears throat> Any other questions? Uh, perhaps Emmanuel can type in the meantime, and I'll keep an eye out for that question. What I will do now is it is get stuck in. Um, what I want to uh, start with tonight is just a quick recap of what was in. <coughs> excuse me, my throat's a bit tight tonight. Um, I want to go through a. A quick recap of um, of the the last little bit that I covered in the recording that I posted on I think Tuesday this week. So it's a little I said in the recording that I posted most recently, just a few days ago. I said I would re rework some of it. So that's what I'm going to kick off with tonight. Uh, the first few slides will be a bit of a recap of what was covered in the recording, but I would still recommend you go and listen to that recording because the recording also covers other aspects and and some of the aspects in a bit more detail so i will 
um, just do a quick recap, and um, and that has to do with um, project scope and work breakdown structure, and then we'll go on to looking at uh, project scheduling and, and time management. So let me just see um, some questions here. Linda's saying uh, that my audio is fading. I don't know if anyone else is... Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure if anyone else is having audio problems. If you could just, if anyone else is experiencing fading audio, audio from me, please just let us know. Because, um, okay, th thanks, Inchley. That that clarifies. So I don't know, Linda, if it's on your side. Emmanuel asking <clears throat> the question, um, as the project, how many people per group? It's um, a minimum of two people and a maximum of four. So let me just write that um, minimum of two and maximum of four people in a group. Okay, so you can have up to four. Obviously, um, you know, if you have three or four in a group, um, potentially it makes the task a little bit easier. Uh, <clears throat> in other words, you might have to um, uh, do slightly less work as an individual, but you um, obviously then have to coordinate more widely, and it's a bit more difficult coordinating with three or four people. Um, <clears throat> okay, we will come to the the stakeholder register. Um, what I will do is in a subsequent session, I'm still busy marking. Um, <clears throat> I'm still busy marking the assignments. Uh, I've got a few more to mark. And at a, a subsequent session, I will give some feedback on 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 that because um, uh, it's uh, is is useful to know. Um, there are various scoring systems, but I will chat through that um, in a subsequent session. Sorry, my throat really is um, seizing up, so let me not delay too much longer and let's get on with things. Okay. <clears throat> um, so let's uh, see where we go with this. Just a reminder of where we are, we had spoken about the project charter being done at the end of the project concept stage. So that arrow represents the life cycle of the project. You've got the four phases of the project, concept, design, execute, and finish. And the charter would come at the end of the concept stage. <clears throat> and then early on in the design phase of the project, you would have to put together the, the scope and do a work breakdown structure of what's involved in making the project happen. And we'll talk about that shortly now. And then you would go into the more detailed design, the, all the detailed designs and plans that have to be put together prior to executing or implementing the project. So what is scope? It's the sum of the product services and results to be provided as a project. So it's the end product and a detailed description of the end product of the project. So this project <coughs> is going to involve building a three bedroom house with two bathrooms, a double garage and a swimming pool. Uh, now that's a, a kind of a very summary scope statement of uh, a house build project. Okay. so. Uh, and then going further than that, the scope statement would also include um, <clears throat> a, a kind of a summary value of the project. In other words, how much it's going to cost and a time span for that as well, a duration. So <coughs> scope management uh, includes the processes required to ensure that the project includes all of the work required. So, so that's the first and most important point of scope management is that you haven't left anything out. You haven't forgotten anything. Make sure that your scope description is, is adequately covering all the items of work that have to be done in, in making this project a success, so everything that needs to go into the project, because it's the things that you forget in your planning stage that are going to come back and bite you. And good project planners, um, obviously through experience and wisdom, but also good project planners and take the time to think through and plan out the project carefully to make sure there's nothing forgotten. Okay, so it's it's all the processes required to ensure that the project <coughs> includes all the work required, <coughs> excuse me, and only the work required. So you need to also state what you're not going to do in the project. 
Um, and to complete the project successfully, managing the scope is primarily concerned with defining and controlling what is and is not included in the project. Because what tends to often happen in projects is we agree what we're going to do, and then once we start work, all sorts of pressures arise as to doing a little bit extra here, a little bit extra there, <clears throat> some other points here, and or why don't we leave this out? And the project can quite easily shift in its focus. So <clears throat> we need to watch out for that as scope control. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So what's included, and this is in page 73, and I spoke about this in a bit more in detail in the previous recording that I released this week, um, but you'd have the scope description, acceptance criteria, deliverables, exclusions, constraints, and assumptions. And I spoke in a bit more detail about the difference between constraints, assumptions, and risks. So go and get some clarity on that from, um, from that recording that I did um, a few days ago. So based on the scope, you want to now do what's called a work breakdown structure, WBS. And this for me is one of two or three fundamental parts of good project planning. If you're going to run a project well, you must plan it well. And in order to plan a project well, you must have done a work breakdown structure uh, <clears throat> very carefully and very adequately. So this is a hierarchical decomposition of the total scope of work. In other words, everything that needs to be done uh, by the project team to accomplish the project objectives and to create the required deliverables. So it's everything you need to put together broken down into a kind of a hierarchy like a family tree and I'll show you some examples. But before I do that, <clears throat> just to give you some tips. The purpose of a work breakdown structure is to understand in detail the work involved in achieving the scope of work. In other words, the end product of your project and you want to understand that in detail. And from this detailed breakdown of the work to be able to accurately estimate and plan for the budget and the schedule. Because you, in breaking down the work into its uh, smaller chunks, it gives you a greater level of confidence in being able to work out how long is each thing going to take and, and, um, and how much each of those elements is going to cost. Okay. So as far as as the detail is concerned, as I've said here, the more detail you have in your work breakdown structure, <clears throat> the more valuable it becomes later for planning and for compiling the following durations, how long each activity is going to take and the deliverables, <clears throat> the resources, what people, equipment and materials are needed, the costs, the risks, the procurement, the Gantt chart and the critical path analysis, all of those things and many other things become a little more, bit more certain and easier when you've done your WBS well. So um, a WBS should have <clears throat> at least three levels, preferably more, and this is discussed on pages <clears throat> 75 to 77. The top layer is your title. Then you've got your main core deliverables, the main things that you need to uh, do in this project and these are described often using nouns things you can see or touch so there's organizing that the, there's the venue is the uh, the music is the um, or there's um, getting the, the the plans um the plans passed um for a house build or, or building something and so on so your main deliverables are described often using nouns not always <coughs> and then your activities or tasks or work packages often best described using verbs, and these are actions you have to take in order to achieve the deliverables. So here's a very brief summary. Um, uh, and I've got um, three examples to show, but this is the first one. I'm really sorry, guys. My uh, the, the air is very dry where I am, and we've had a hot day, so and I'm recovering from a bug, so. My throat is struggling. I'll try and get through this quickly. So you've got your um, project at the top and then uh, your phases, your deliverables and under that specific work packages. So that's a, and, and you, as you'll notice, your, your work breakdown structure looks a little bit like an organogram in a in an organization. 
a, a, a layout of the staff, but it's a layout of the chunks of work that need to happen. Here's another example. Um, this is, uh, and, I, and I've been through this, I'm just repeating what I gave in the recording, so I'm not going to spend too much more time on this, but you can see um, <clears throat> you've got your phases, your deliverables, and your chunks of work under those um, that go into making each of those happen. And as you can see, they are all <clears throat> numbered according to the breakdown. So you've got deliverable number two, um, <clears throat> deliverables number 3.1, 3.2, and under those are, are sub numbers, as you can see. Um, and then here's one last um, quick summary example. I'm just giving you uh, not a final template that you must use, but, but samples of the way in which it might look. <coughs> okay, so that's um, pretty much where I had got to in the recording, but what you want to do is <coughs> control the scope of a project, and that involves monitoring the status of the project and the product scope and managing any changes. And <coughs> controlling the scope actually happens most significantly during the implementation phase of a project, the, four, the third phase of the project. So uh, we touch on this again later in the course when we start talking about project implementation. Um, <clears throat> but it's minimizing changes to the project, ensuring any changes are approved and managed, and preventing what's called scope creep. Um, <clears throat> and there's some more detail about this. As I said, later on in the course, we'll come back and talk about that um, <clears throat> in some more detail. But there's an eight-step uh, process that is useful, um, and this is discussed on page 80. And for the sake of time and uh, my voice, I am not going to dwell on this any longer, but look through it um, in the manual, uh, and it's the eight-step process for <clears throat> controlling scope. And I might come back to that again uh, when we get to, to that point, but page 80 is where this is at. The next chunk of work to look at, uh, or the next um, element in project management is managing the time or the schedule of the project. And these are the processes required to manage the timely completion of the project, so getting it finished within deadline. So what's involved in doing this? And there's a number of elements that go into managing the time, and I'm going to talk through these over the balance of our time together this evening. The first is you have to, as we've done already, define the activities and you've got to have your work breakdown structure in place. So you've got to know what you're going to do. Okay, that, that's the, and this is why the WBS is so important. Your WBS is your foundational activity for all of your project planning. And if you haven't, I've said this a hundred times, I'm going to say it a hundred times more. Do a proper WBS. If you haven't done one carefully and thoughtfully, <clears throat> everything else stumbles as a result of that. So point one know what you're going to do and the detail involved in that. And the the kind of joking example I always use, and I don't know if I've highlighted it yet, uh, is um, I don't know if any of you have been involved in um, organizing a wedding recently, uh, either your own wedding or a family member's wedding. But your average couple these days, and particularly the bride, I don't want to be sexist, but it's quite often the bride is more particular than the groom in these situations. But um, for many brides, the wedding day, your wedding day is the most important day in your life. Most, I, th I think it's kind of acknowledged that uh, uh, wedding day is, is special. And so when it comes to planning the wedding, there's very little left to chance. If you ask your average bride, you know, how's your wedding planning going? The, the, often the answer is sure. There's a lot to do, and I'm stressed, and I'm. I, you you won't often come across a bride who, if you ask how's it going, she'll say, "Oh, it's cool. We, you know, we'll just see what happens on the day. We're gonna, you know, we're taking it casual. Um, it's it's pretty chilled, and we'll just see." Now there are some rare individuals like that, but 99% of brides want everything, and grooms want everything absolutely perfect on the day. And because of that, they're going to plan everything meticulously. And if I was to stop now, I'm not going to do this, but if I was to stop now and say, tell me all the things that have to get, go into planning a wedding. And uh, and in our from my background, our culture is <clears throat> you have a church service 
followed by a, a wedding reception or like a party uh, and a meal and a celebration. Um, <clears throat> tell me all of the things that have to go into organizing that. You know, there's the music, the videos, the priest, the music, the um, uh, the cake, the decor, the catering, um, the flowers. And so it goes on and on and on. And you want to make sure that all of that is very thoroughly and carefully planned and detailed. You don't leave much to chance. You don't say, oh, we'll see how it turns out on the day. No, you map it out very carefully. Now, I'm harping on about this to make the point that a wedding is like a project. <clears throat> and if it's important to you to have a perfect wedding, then it should be Okay, you're not as emotionally invested in your average work project as you would be on, in your own wedding. But to the extent that you are invested in that project, that's the extent to which you will be meticulous and careful in mapping out and working your, your project plan and making sure that nothing is left to chance. So <clears throat> that's why I say your WBS is vitally important because it becomes... The foundation of everything else so start with your WBS what do we need to do the next is to from that have your activity list um, then you want to oh excuse me my dog has just got scripted by something so forgive the barking in the background uh, she doesn't normally carry on for long and she's just doing her job so <clears throat> the next step so you you define the activities have a list from that and then you sequence the activities which means in what order must they happen um, and uh, I'll come back to this, but as a very simple example, if you're looking at a wedding, can't send the wedding invitations out until you've done three things. You need to know the date and book the date of your wedding. You need to know the venue and book the venue for their wedding. And you need to know your guest list, who you're sending your invitations to. So that's a what's called a compulsory or mandatory sequencing where you have to have booked the venue and booked the date before you can print and send out the invitations. Okay, so that's that's a, a very simple example of sequencing activities. What must come before what? What must happen and in what order? And I'll, I'll repeat this. I'll probably go through this again in another session. But this, in a nutshell, is what's involved in scheduling a project and managing the time. So define the activities, have your list, sequence them, and what order must they happen? Then how long is each of those individual activities going to take to do? And from that, you can put together a Gantt chart, which you're going to look at a bit uh, more this evening. Uh, and from that, we'll, and this is we'll cover in a future session, look at a network diagram and doing the critical path. So don't worry about those for now. We'll come back to those. So time management are all the processes, as we said, required to manage the timely completion of the project. Um, so, as I've been saying, and this is a bit of a repeat in different words of what I've just said in the previous slide, it's the set of activities you start with. We have to do A, B, and C. Then you want to sequence them. In what order must they happen? We're going to do B, C, and A. Then we want the durations of those. B is going to take two days. C is going to take one day. A is going to take five days. And then from there, we can put together a, a simple um, Gantt chart. Um, and obviously then the network diagram and critical path, which we'll come to. So this is taken from the uh, module manual. <clears throat> it's an example of a activity list, which you would then, having done this activity list, it becomes the basis for you putting your Gantt chart together. So what you can see here is, and this is in the manual, a set of activities with their numbers on the left-hand side, the ones in capitals are your kind of headings or deliverables. So let me just get my pen working so I can highlight what I am uh, trying to get across to you. Um, where has my pen gone now? And is it going to work? Uh, let's see. Please don't tell me my pen's died. I've got a like a tablet thing, stylus. And... Let's see if it behaves. There we go. I see life. Sorry about the delay here. Okay, so you've got your, your list of activities um, on, on the left-hand side. These main ones in capitals here are your main deliverables. Okay, so you've got uh, catering and you've got a cake and food as deliverables. And then there would be further deliverables down here. And then 
For each deliverable, you've got a set of activities that make that deliverable happen. How long are each of these things going to take? Okay, and you've got some milestones in place as well. Um, I'll come back to that when we discuss Gantt charts in a bit more detail. Um, <clears throat> what resources are required for each of those activities and any kind of comments or kind of what those um, various things are. This is kind of just for information purposes. That's a milestone. That's a deliverable 1.1 uh, activity, activity, activity. Sorry about the noise here. Excuse me. Just give me one second. I just want to close the window. Sorry about the delay. <clears throat> so you've got, yeah, that, that's, this is an activity table showing the durations and the resources that are required. Okay. Then you need to sequence the activities. Now, the most common sequence, or there, there are four, by the way, or four different types. And um, the most common one is what's called a finish to start um, uh, sequencing. Um, and then you've got these other three. So let me just discuss them quickly. Finish to start sequencing means you have to finish this thing before you can start the next thing. And then you have to finish that before you can start the next. So it's called a finish of activity A before you can start activity B. And activity B must be finished before you can start activity C. Okay, so um, very simple in a house build. Foundations have to be finished before you can start building the walls, and the walls must be finished before you can put the roof on. So that's the most common one, and it's kind of the default um, sequencing uh, constraint. It's the most common one, and uh, for 99, probably all 99 to 100% of your project activities will follow this format as a finish to start. Okay, but in real life, other things exist. So let me show them to you quickly. There, you have a finish to finish um, sequence, which means, um, and uh, uh, yeah, this is, I should have done them in a slightly different order, but this is finish to finish. So you've got activity A here, which is plastering, must finish before the electrical work here, activity B, can finish. Okay. So electrical work can start whenever you need to but it cannot finish until the plastering is finished in maybe one or two days after that. So hopefully that makes sense. What this is saying to us, electrical work can start whenever, that doesn't matter, but it cannot finish until the plastering work is finished. Okay, so that's a finish to finish sequence. Then the next one, and this happens a little more um, what's probably the second most common one of, of the different sequencing types. The, the finish to start is the most common, and it's, it's the one we're most familiar with. Here is the start to start, and what this means is you cannot start activity B until A has started, okay? So you can, and what this says is we can start painting the walls, but the flooring, cannot start until painting is started but we don't have to wait till all the finish all the so we don't have to wait till all the walls are finished before we start doing the flooring now think of a house where it's got five or six different <coughs> rooms that you need to do flooring and painting for you can paint the first bedroom and then go on to paint the second bedroom and the third bedroom you don't have to wait for all six rooms to be finished before you start the flooring you can paint room number one and once that's finished and you go on to painting room number two you can start flooring in room number one and once <clears throat> room number two has finished and the painters have moved to room number three then you can start flooring number two and so on so that's what's called a start to start um, relationship and there are plenty of those um, that happen in real life um, <clears throat> so yeah, that's it. And then the last one, I'm not even going to explain. It's a very unusual one. It's called start to finish. And what this means is you cannot finish B until A has started. Uh, it's a bit of a mind warp, that one. So I'm not going to fuss about that. Sorry. Um, leave that. Now, when it comes to putting together how long each activity is going to take, how do we work this out? And very simply, 
the most common form of duration estimating is just using expert judgment. Find somebody who's done it before, ask them how long did it take you to do this, roughly how long will it take, <clears throat> um, and getting, uh, if you're an expert in that in that job, then you would know uh, that piece of work is going to take me about two days to work to do to do that other chunk of work is going to take me a week. So just um, look at expert judgment. Analogous estimating is looking at historical data and using that as like an analogy for this. So if on a previous project, it took us two weeks to do that amount of work on that project, then doing similar work, but let's say uh, double the quantity of work is going to take us double the time or whatever it is. So you, you're comparing to similar historical information. Um, Parametric estimating is uh, is just using uh, parameters to assist you. I'm not going to uh, go into that. And three-point estimating is an interesting uh, method where you look at uh, and you make a judgment call and you say, what's the most likely time for a job to take? What's the most optimistic time and what's the most pessimistic time? And there's a formula you use. So you take um, <clears throat> you take your most optimistic time plus your most pessimistic time plus your most likely time multiply that by four because it's most likely it has a higher weighting so you make it times four and you divide that by six because there's one two and four elements here and you divide it by six so let's say our most optimistic time was two weeks to do the project and our most pessimistic time was going to take seven weeks or let's make it eight weeks to do the project and the most likely time was say three weeks and so we multiply that by four which is 12 so 12 plus eight is so that's 22 divided by six what's 22 divided by six um it would be uh three comma um uh, six six weeks i think that would be our um, end up being our, our time. So it's a three-point estimating where your three points are your most optimistic, most pessimistic, and most likely. And you weight the most likely and you divide it. So, um, excuse me, this um, hasn't worked yet. Let me just rewrite this. It would be three comma six weeks um, or three comma seven weeks would be for, for that chunk of work. Okay, it's, it's, it's a method that used to get used as a way of calculating um, the most likely or unlikely way of, of, of doing things. Not, not unlikely, sorry, but um, uh, it gets closer to being a more accurate um, estimate of your durations. Now, based on having your activity list put together, your um, sequencing, in other words, what order is things going to happen and how long they're going to take, you can then put together a Gantt chart. Now, a Gantt chart is named after a bloke called Henry Gantt from the First World War. Um, it's a bar chart of scheduled information where activities are listed on the vertical axis, dates are shown across the top on the horizontal axis, and the activity durations are shown as horizontal bars placed according to start and finish dates. So what does that look like? And I'm sure most of you have seen this sort of layout before. At its simplest, here are your activities, okay, going down here, A, B, C, D, E. Those are our activities. Across the top is our calendar or our diary or our dates, okay? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Monday, Tuesday. And what each bar represents <coughs> is activity A is going to take place over Monday, Tuesday. B is going to happen on this Wednesday. C is going to happen Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. D is going to happen here. And E is going to happen on Monday, Tuesday, the following week. So that in its very simplest layout is what a Gantt chart is. Activities down the left, calendar across the top, and then the bars get filled in to show when each thing is going to happen. And it's a very powerful and easy to process visual representation of your project because it contains a lot of information simultaneously. And the simple view is the simplest view but you've got you can see all your activities you can see your diary you can see when each thing is going to happen and how long each thing is going to take to do then you can throw in a lot more information onto your gantt chart and that's what the software allows okay 
uh, sorry for this barking dog. <clears throat> um, here is a sample screenshot from Microsoft Project. You've got all of your activities down here, okay, for house plans. So you've got your deliverables, your activities that go into this for that. Then in this column here, you've got your durations, how many days each of these is going to take. You can put days or weeks or hours in there. I'll show you in more detail at a later point. Then you'd have your start and finish dates, which the software, if you filled in this activity, um, sorry, if you filled in your durations correctly and your sequencing correctly, then these dates get calculated automatically. You don't have to punch that in. It just gets done. And then on the right-hand side here, you've got your calendar across the top and your bars showing stuff and then you've got your arrows i don't know if you see all these little arrows dropping down here these are your 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 sequencing or your dependencies to say this what what this arrow is saying for instance here this arrow that is there is saying this activity here cannot start until this one is finished okay so it's dependent on that uh, look at another one here. This milestone until this activity is finished. That's what this vertical arrow means. Yeah. By the way, a diamond shape um, there represents a milestone. And I'll explain that in some more detail at a later point. Okay, so I'm just giving a, a brief intro. Here is a, a similar layout with a just slightly different information. Let me just go back to the previous slide. So this one has your task name, your duration, start and finish dates. The next is the same set. You've got your task name, duration. Your predecessor is your dependencies or your sequencing, okay? This is another word for dependencies, dependencies, okay? So your predecessors. So what this is telling us is activity three here is dependent on activity two being finished. Activity seven is dependent on activity six being finished, okay? Um, and so on. So here, this activity 12 is dependent on eight, activity eight, which is submit plans to municipality being finished. So, um, and then you've got another column here showing what percentage complete, which is a management tool within the software, okay? So that's uh, that layout. Now, that is a very kind of brief intro to uh, project sort of scheduling. You come up with your set of activities, uh, sequence them. In other words, what order must they happen in? How long is each of them going to take? And then you can put together a basic Gantt chart. To wrap up tonight, I want to give you a very quick um, <clears throat> Uh, intro, I just want to do this for maybe three or four minutes because I know time is pushing on. Um, three or four minutes um, just to show you how to basically use Team Gantt. Now, uh, let me just discard that. Um, the software <clears throat> that gets used, you can, if you, by the way, have access to Microsoft Project, then I would suggest you use that because it's the it is probably one of the better ones to use and it is very powerful and very it's it's Microsoft <clears throat> most of us know the Microsoft environment and it's quite uh, user friendly and and intuitive to use. Um, <clears throat> however, only use that if you've already got access to it. Please do not go and buy. Microsoft Project, because I think a single user license now for that software costs between 15 and 20,000 Rand. So it's not something you can just go and get easily. Uh, <clears throat> it is a very, very powerful piece of software. Don't go and buy it just to do a nice Gantt chart, because um, that's a very expensive Gantt chart. Um, but if you do through work or wherever have access to MS Projects, then by all means use it. It's now called Project Professional. What I'm going to show you is an online cloud-based software. I'm just going to give the kind of the opening screen or two. I'm going to explain it in detail. I'll do that at another time, and there's some videos you can watch. Um, so let's just get um, Team Gantt going and shared on the screen here. Uh, let me just maximize this and go to teamgantt.com. So it's teamgantt.com. 
it takes you to probably a login page. Um, yeah. <clears throat> now, Team Ghent is one of the um, one of very few Gantt charts and project management software platforms that don't um, insist on your credit card details and all the rest. In other words, you can create an account and um, get a certain amount of um, functionality without any charge whatsoever. And they don't require you to create an account with, with uh, credit card details. So you, you, so you still have to register and log in. Um, so you need to create an identity, but they don't take your credit card details. And just to note, the functionality that's available to um, free users, to the free version of, of Team Gantt is very limited, but it's sufficient for the assignment and for the work that we're doing in the course. Okay, so um, <clears throat> there are some funnies involved, which I will uh, give you some warnings on. Um, but the, the, the software is quite limited, but it's sufficient for the assignment um, and for what's required. So I'm going to log in because I already have an account. Um, and it takes me to my sort of landing page. Now, with the software, you don't have to save anything. It saves automatically in the cloud as you go along. You don't, it just is auto, it's, it's cloud based. It's keeping. Um, on its system, whatever you do, it keeps it on here. So I've got an existing project here, which I am going to delete um, because I want to start from scratch. Are you sure you want to delete? Yes, I do. Now, <clears throat> the reason I'm deleting it because the free version of Team Gantt, you can only do one project at a time. If you want to plan many projects simultaneously, if you want to open a bunch of different project files, you have to start paying. So for the free version, you can only do one project at a time. So there are no projects now. I've deleted that one. And what you do is you go to create a new project. I'm going to give it uh, uh, a name, test project one. Start date, you would put in, I'm going to start on October the 9th, on Monday, October the 9th. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to not use a template. I'm just going to use it as blank. The default view will be Gantt. And by the way, quite a lot of the options are not available on the free version. I've said it before, but some things are grayed out or some things you'll click on them and it will come up saying, sorry, you can't use that until you start paying. But the functionality you need for the assignment submission is adequate. Days in the week is here. So it says create a new project. I want to create a new project. And here, you can watch the videos. There's, there's in the module manual are links to some YouTube videos that give a bit more detail on this. Um, <clears throat> but basically, you would put in um, the the tasks. Yeah, I'm just going to put in a very brief sample. Uh, point. Oh no, hang on. Point architect uh, discussion one. Uh, draft one discussion to uh, final draft plans uh, and then plans. Now I'm just hitting enter. I'm just typing and hitting enter and it opens. Um, by the way, I don't want that as um, I think I want to add a, a milestone here. Um, plans past that will be a milestone now you'll see that <clears throat> on the right hand side are th these bars start to show up and you can just click and drag i'm just clicking and dragging to make that take a little bit longer um, then the next activity i'm going to have a discussion one here and it'll just be on that day there by the way you'll you'll get the feel of it by, by playing with it. And this is why I'm showing it to you now. Please start playing with this so that you get a feel for the way it works. Don't leave this till the night before your submission, your assignment part two is due. Please do this. Start playing with this now. That's why I'm showing it to you now. Because there are a few little funny that like, like take a bit of getting used to. So I'm just moving my, I'm not clicking or dragging it. I'm not clicking anything. I'm just moving my mouse. And it says,
Hello, we're back. Um, hello, sorry. Um, we're still recording and we lost. Are we there? Uh, yeah. Um, just confirming, uh, Linda and others, am I back again? Uh, sorry about that glitch. I'm not going to be too much longer. Um, so you'll see as you move around, you can you can click and drag and move things. Um, and then um, you'll see this last one, which I put in as a milestone. A milestone is like a, a marker in a project to, to show um, the accomplishment of the, the, the kind of completion of a specific phase. And it shows up as a diamond, so I put that about there. Okay. Now what I can do is add dependency links to these. And you click and drag from the little black dot of the one before. I click and drag down and I link it. And it should put a little faint line in there. I'll put another one there. Um, I can now move this if I wanted to. I could move it over. Um, the line stays in place there. You just need to be playing with it. Now, <clears throat> I've put in a link there and it's showing in red because <clears throat> it's telling me I've made this activity here discussion too i've made it dependent on the one before but it's it's actually on the timeline it's coming before that so i'm going to have to shift this over to make sure it comes after same with this one that's going to highlight in red so i need to move that over and then likewise with this one this would be here and you can um no that didn't link let's put it into there um, and you can do multiple links. You can you can put in a link from there to there as well. Um, so just start playing around. But obviously, make sure that your logic is correct when you come to doing your final project. Play around with stuff for now. But when you're doing your actual um, <clears throat> assignment submission, your project submission, make sure the logic is correct, that your your sequencing is correct, and that it makes sense, that this follows that, that follows this. Um, and you can then add more uh, activities and so on down the line. I'm not going to show you now. You can add some resources to it, a limited number of resources or people that are working on your project. Um, and then when it comes to printing, you can print it to PDF. But bear in mind, please, you only get three chances to print. That's another limit they've put on this um, software, sadly. Um, you get three chances to print. So one of the ways around that is to um when you've when you've got a nice project in place you can export it you can save it there's a way to say export and you export it to a csv file then you delete the project and you import from in a blank project you import from a csv and it starts it keep it keeps everything it it, it loads the project again but as if it's a new project and you get another three chances to print to either a real printer or to PDF, which is what you would use to submit your Gantt chart for your assignment. Now, I've been through very quickly just to give you a heads up early on. There's still, I'm um, thinking, um, sure, another five, six weeks till you have to submit your second part of your assignment. I don't have the date at my fingertips today um, and my brain's gone dead. Um, <clears throat> but start playing with this now. Um, and it'll make a bit more sense once we've been through a couple of other things in subsequent weeks. Okay, and I will come back in the national support session and give another more detailed uh, demonstration of Team Gantt and, and how to use that. Uh, Microsoft Project, um, the concept is exactly the same in terms of your activities down the left, your, your, your diary or calendar across the top and the bars showing your activities and when they happen. Uh, but it's a little less uh, clunky to use than, than Team Gantt. The reason we use Team Gantt is it's free and anyone can use it online. It's basic functionality. Okay, so enough from me. Sure, we've uh, been going for nearly an hour. Um, <clears throat> thanks for uh, your participation uh, or your attendance tonight. Uh, it's been good to have you on board. Are there any questions before we sign off? Anybody got anything they want to ask? before we wrap. If nothing, you're welcome to sign off. Thanks guys for, for as I said, for being here. Um, I will get the results. Uh, by the way, when the results, when I've finished marking the assignment, 
I have to submit and upload the marks and then Varsity College decides when they've been verified and approved and, and when they get sent out. So, well, not sent out, but when they get released. So, I unfortunately do not have control over, over their release date. Um, that's up to Varsity College itself and their admin department sorts that out. But I, I've got a deadline, I think, by Monday to finish the marking. It should be done before that. And um, once it's out the way, they then process it. It's usually within a few days. I don't see it being very long. And then the results are out and I will do a, um, a bit of a discussion in a subsequent session around that, um, around the assignment part one. Uh, but in the national support session ahead of assignment part two, I will go through the software in um, again and demonstrate it in perhaps a little bit more detail and give any further tips. But please start fiddling around with it and experimenting with it now. You 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 can you know <clears throat> do a bunch of dummy pro do a project and delete it. Start again. Do another project. Delete it. Do a project. Export it to CSV as I've shown you. Go to menu um, menu. Export to CSV um, and that allows you to. Uh, in a sense, save it yourself, and then you create a new project imp and then import from um, from that and, and work from there. Um, so play around. Short guys, if you're done and finished, <clears throat> you're welcome to sign off and leave. Please uh, leave through uh, the, the door the, with the top little three menu lines at the top left of your screen. Click on that to depart. And... Um, yeah, you're free to go. I'll stay online just for a bit longer if anyone has any questions. But well done, guys. See you next time.